You are about to know the thrill of seeing that which has never been seen before. You are about to enter a beautiful, exciting, wonderful new world. The world of 1960. Most things are targeted at males. Males being visual creatures, they like to look at things. They like to be reminded about sex, so it's definitely a great way to use something in advertising. You pretty much use sex to sell everything these days. Promo girls are involved in the economic contract of sex work. That's what they're doing. Okay, so the stereotype for promo girl would probably be blonde, big boob, bimbo. The bikini models, that sort of thing. Um, anybody, you know, wearing skimpy clothing. They usually think we're dumb, we can't get a better job. They're there to look good as opposed to having brains. Promo girl, another well, a better term for it is a promotional demonstrator. So you're showing a product, you're putting a name to a brand or an event. We look at it as a, someone that works as an ambassador for the brand, basically, to promote whatever it is, whatever part of that brand needs promoting or the brand itself. Someone with a really, really good personality, outgoing personality, you talk to anyone, whether they are um, young, old, anything. Basically just getting their product out there. I think people think, it, well, you know, if they're going to do an ad campaign, that it's really important to get out there on the street and touch people one-to-one -one and get their message across. And it also makes it look like they're making a little bit more effort to, you know, listen to the public and that sort of thing as well. If you're walking down the street and you see a hot girl in a bikini giving something out for free, you're just going to stop and you're going to want to find out what that product is. I guess it's just we're human and human beings like to kind of interact with you know, the opposite sex. So the way the promo gr girls are used is um, is a return to kind of a key function of advertising, right? So like the key function of advertising is that sex sells, and if you um, set up women as sex objects, then you will be able to draw attention to whatever it is that they're holding or pitching or trying to hand you in the streets. Men, nothing takes it off like Noxima medicated tea. Take it off. Take it all off. Now that, to my mind, is a fairly traditional way of using women in advertising, right? You use them as sex objects. And I think that this was a traditional way, um, a traditional mode of advertising, certainly in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> I do think that television advertising is becoming a different ballpark, as is print advertising. Advertisers are not sure any longer that people are responding as they want them to respond to televised and print adverts. They're not even sure that people are noticing the televised adverts. People aren't picking up advertisements on TV anymore because they are that boring thing that comes on TV and you just don't want to listen. You might watch it, but nothing's going to get stored. With promo, you get the product, you use it, you might fall in love, you might not, but you still would have used it. You're going to talk about it, people talk. You know, you're going to have a good experience. You're going to try a chocolate bar, you're going to think, oh my God, it's so nice. You're going to buy it the next day. You're going to tell your girlfriend about it, etc., etc. That's why it's a growing industry. But now we're seeing something else arising, and that's um, that's this notion that we will bypass the media. The media will, the ads will still be there as a kind of reinforcement. But now what, what the ads are reinforcing is that little memory that you had of walking down the street and being given a product to try by, say, a promo girl. Here's to the ladies, the fair and the weak. Fair they are, we'll all admit. But who dares call them weak? Our modern girls play as hard and with as much vitality and stamina as any man. How do they do it? Where do they find all that energy? 
that seemingly inexhaustible store of pep and ginger. It is work in the sense that um, these are girls that have a degree of attractiveness that is appreciated, sort of culturally appreciated, and therefore they can exchange that attractiveness for the wage packet. This is my kind of main income, um, like at least 10 hours a week, at least, minimum. I've done up to 40 hours a week on top of going to uni. Our baseline rate would probably be about $35 an hour, for, and that's for a standard promotional person that maybe goes out on a t-shirt with jeans on. Um, and then if you were looking at a bikini kind of style model or something like that, that was wearing skimpy clothing, not too sure of the circumstances, but maybe anywhere between 50 and 75. Um, you know, if you want someone to, to prance about in a skimpy outfit, then you usually have to pay them for the privilege. I think you have to judge the circumstances that you're going to put promotional people in and then judge the way that you're going to pay them according to that. For instance, if you are going to put them in skimpy clothing and they may be feeling vulnerable, then you have to um, adjust the payment to suit that. The money is a big plus when you're a promo girl. That's why most girls probably do it. I don't hold it against the promo girls that um, they contract themselves to this sort of work. In a patriarchal society, which we're still in, it's more a, a, a structural issue. Like, if we're going to criticize it, if we're going to think about what they're doing, then we need to think about the structure that they're taking part in. As long as you've got your standards, your moral standards, and it's not illegal, then I don't see... You can't... You, you can have any job you want. I mean, I know my values and stuff, and different people have different values. It doesn't bother you whether someone else thinks you're an object or not, because to me it is a job, and it, it does take a lot to be um, a promo person. You go through hard days, and you still have to keep on smiling no matter what. It's, it's a hard job. <laughs> 